Good, composite functions. Um, I promised some additional information. Uh, a new situation, for instance, fx equals 3x plus 5. Okay, and let's say I have another function, gx, uh, and that equals, I don't know, uh, minus 2x plus 11. And now they're going to ask me, evaluate, well, let's do g, f, and then minus 2. So they're now asking me for the composite function, g, f, and then minus 2 for x. I'm going to show you two ways, and I'll show you that both ways uh, give you the correct answer. And the first one is a little bit more difficult and the second one easier, so I suggest you do the second one, but I want to show you the first method anyway. First of all, I'm going to plug in the function f into g like I've been doing in the previous videos. And hopefully you can do that now. So I put f into g now, okay, so rather than x is going to be 3x plus 5 inside the function g, so minus 2 times 3x plus 5. Um, and then plus 11. Yeah. We expand that, minus 6x, minus 10, plus 11. And those are minus 6x's, and then add 1. Okay, so now I found a composite function, if you like, of g, f, x. And then they asked me to evaluate that for x minus 2, g, f, minus 2. So it's minus 6 times x, so times minus 2, plus 1, I'll just continue here, that is 12 plus 1, so the answer would be 13 to this particular problem. Yeah? So we are actually evaluating it for a numeric rule, uh, do I pronounce it properly? I don't think so. But anyway, for a value of x, which is minus 2, the answer is 13. Yeah. Now perhaps easier, if I take a new piece of paper, is do the following. If I have to find gf minus 2, I first plug in minus 2 into f. Yeah, so I'm going to evaluate the function f for minus 2. So 3 times minus 2 plus 5. Yeah, so this is the different method. Yeah, minus 6 plus 5, which is minus 1. So the function of f for x is minus 2 equals minus 1. And now the composite function, what do I do? I'm going to put this value now into the function of g. So g minus 1 equals minus 2 times minus 1 uh, plus 11, okay, which is minus 2 times minus 1, which is 2 plus 11, and that equals 13. So again, I get 13, and that is the same answer as I got a minute ago. You see that? So of course you get the same answer, because this is maths. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. So you can do two things, yeah? The more complicated way, I guess, is to plug in f into g, like you did before, okay? To evaluate g for the function f, and then all the way at the end, if you've done so properly, then to plug in minus two for x, and you get 13, yeah? The other way of doing it is to plug in a minus two into f first, then you get a numerical value, yeah, and that number you plug into G then, and then you get the same answer, in this case, 13. Okay? I will see you at the last video where I'm going to show you one more new uh, situation you can be confronted with. Alright, see you there.